Welcome, everyone. This is the Create Engage Succeed Show with your host, Mary Nunley and Amadeus Nunley. And today we have Rose Simmons, who we have had the pleasure of working with um, for the last several months from the Launches Made Simple group. And we thought Rose would be a fascinating guest, especially as we're moving into the new year and we're talking about having new habits and living healthier lifestyles and hopefully one day, you know, being able to move freely along around the, the planet again. So we all want to look our best, feel our best. And while many of us are still at home in lockdown, one of the things that's really cool is there are some ways to help your kids and even yourself learn better. So Rose and I were having this conversation a few days ago, and I'm like, oh my gosh, Rose, we got to have you on the show. So without further ado, Rose, please introduce yourself, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Okay, so I'm Rose Simons. Sorry. Not wealthy, not wealthy enough for two M's. And, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyways, and yes, um, we're all stuck at home, and the kids have to learn at home, and all of us adults are trying to re redo ourselves things at home uh, so and we're all under stress so so what do we do well there's all kinds of things you can do uh, one thing is when we're under stress logic and creative part of the brain just kind of go out to lunch and don't come back so it's kind of hard to learn relearn stuff I mean in the six months that I was in class with you for four months I was like <laughs> here in headlights you know because here I am, 67 years old, and tech was like, ah, what do I do? So anyways, um, but there's things that you can do. And one is turn the brain on. So by uh, back in the olden days, and you have to be old enough to remember when teachers could actually touch and parents could touch the kids without getting into trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the teacher used to, you know, little Johnny's not paying attention in school. And the teacher would, I told you to listen to me, right? <laughs> well, on his ear. Whether she knew it or not, she was turning on the hearing part of the brain. So oh. by, so you can do this yourself by turning your head to the ear that you want to work on, right? And you grab a hold of your ear low and you pull gently down and out, okay? No beating. And it's kind of hard. With it. And then, so that turns on the hearing part of the brain. Now you want to turn on the brain. So you uncurl the earlobe. Oh, wow. And you undo that like three times. It won't stay uncurled, but that's okay. All right. So, and if you look at your earlobe, it kind of looks like a baby in the womb. Mm -hmm. There's the head and there's the butt, right? Okay. okay. So... This turns on the hearing part. This turns on the brain. So you do that on one side, then you turn your head to do it on the other side. It takes two seconds. Now you got your brain working and the hearing part so that the words that I'm speaking to you don't just go, whoosh, they actually lock onto the brain. That is fascinating. <laughs> it looks like Amadeus has something he wants to say despite the headset. <laughs> yeah, but despite the headset, trying it makes it a little bit more difficult to do. A little bit um, with the headset, yeah. So in, in that line, are there some other good tips that you might have for kind of activating that brain or the body for better retention or learning? Sure. Um, if you've ever heard of Baroque music, mm -hmm. okay. now, so most of us know about Pachelbel Canon and D, you know, the wedding song. Mm -hmm. nah, nah, nah. Okay. All right. So that type of music back when they made it back in the, whenever it was 1400s, whatever, they were smarter than us and <laughs> <laughs> literally. And uh, so the cadence of the beat is such that if you play that music in the background, very low, while you're trying to learn anything, then what it does is it automatically gets whatever it is you're exposed to, whether you're auditory, uh, reading, whatever, it will get it into long-term memory. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, because otherwise it takes five times um, and using the different senses, the more you use, the quicker it gets in. But otherwise, without the broke music, you have to be exposed to something five times for it to sink in. 
So a person's name, if you wanna know, remember a person's name, if you can hear it from them and then you repeat it somehow five times, on the fifth, sixth time, you've got it. Hmm. Ah, so that's so, my problem. I see your name in print all the time, but when we're in class together, you've never really said your last name. It's always just Rose. Right. And so when I looked at it in print, I made the assumption that it was with like, it would sound like it had two M's like Simon um, or Simon. Simmons, and yeah. once you said it aloud, now if I say Rose Simon five more times, but okay. add another S on the end. So it's think Simon. of simple Simons or uh -huh. Simons says. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and again, it's just like trying to demonstrate for our audience too. It's so, so it's like I read it and I thought it was pronounced one way. Rose corrected me. Now uh, I practiced, but I got it wrong. So what would happen though, and I'm horrible with names. I will admit that. I mean, it's like, I can tell you what you wore. We could get off this call and I'm like, oh yeah, that was that lady. She wore a blue shirt. She had a white logo. There's a white door behind. And I could tell you all that stuff. And they're like, great. What's her name? I'm like, I don't know. Um, and that's just kind of like one of my brain things. So if you have any tricks for that or ideas, that would be fantastic because sure. Ken um, laughs at me because he's like, Mary, that person had a whole conversation with you and you just nodded and acted like you knew who they were. And I'm like, well, I knew <laughs> where I knew them from, but I have no idea who I was talking to. <laughs> well, most people, when you read, um, the brain is pretty marvelous. Most times the brain only has to pick up the first letter and the last letter of a word. And mm -hmm. it could be all jumbled up. And your brain will say, oh, well, I know what that is. And you will be able to read it, even though it's all jumbled up. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. So now how do I remember that word or remember that person? Well, you, the, if you want to remember it, you need to at least use some of your different senses. You know, so if you could write the name and if you could read the name out loud and you're hearing it. So you're hearing it, you're seeing it, and you're tactile, you're writing it. Now uh -huh. that's three ways. Okay. Or if you could just say, Mary, 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 <laughs> Rose, 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 five times, okay? No, and I mean, that's pretty cool because I'm learning a language on Duolingo. And that's one of their, the things that they flash up is if you want to get better at language quickly, make sure after you complete each lesson, you write it down and you say it aloud. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, let me go do my next lesson. Um, but part of that's because I'm relearning languages that I had learned when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So part of me is going, oh, I already know that. I don't need to know that. But as soon as we get past where I stopped in high school and college, I'm sure that applying those tips will be very helpful. <laughs> and if you could, while you're doing your classes, play the Baroque music in the background. Okay. Because I teach a class in traditional Chinese medicine. My students are 18 to 65. Wow. And all, you know, mix, male, female, and some interested and some not so. But <laughs> the instructor before me used to take 19 weeks, 19 weeks, and it wow. was torture, okay, to teach what I teach in now literally 12 hours. That's amazing. Because and that's I have the music in the amazing. background. Okay. And all the other thing is this, if you want to uh, the thing that I found is that it, little kids learn while playing, right? They're having fun. Yeah. So it's a game and they learn better. As soon as we make it like work, then it's a stress and logic and creative shut down. Ah. And it's like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. All right. So remember, Logic and creative are the frontal parts of the brain. If you want, like some people in the class, um, they're great listening and, and having fun or whatever. But then when it comes to taking a test, ooh, the stress. So logic and creative, phew, shut oh. down. Now, uh, if it isn't in back brain, right? If it isn't in back brain, which is, hey, I get up and I can brush my teeth and go to the bathroom and tie my shoe and do the alphabet, whatever. All those things that you've learned by rote, right? Like the back of your hand. Uh huh. If it isn't back there, you're not going to access it. Oh, short term. This is short term memory, the front part of the brain. So, so what are we going to do? Okay. So yes, repetition, key to retention. 
music helps. I always have the music playing in the background, right? I try to have them, if they're going to study at home, play the music, right? Because in, in the traditional Chinese medicine is very abstract stuff. Some of it's right on and the rest of it is like, where did you get that? Okay, I don't know. I wasn't around 5,000 years ago. I'm just teaching. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right? But the thing is, you still need to know it to pass my test. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What you do with it after that, I don't care. But <laughs> got to pass the test. So this is what you do. Believe it or not, we have where you would have horns as a goat. There's two little spots here above your eyes. Right? So this is electricity 101. Okay. So you take of course, in electricity, you don't want to be messing with crossing wires, right? Because when right. and everybody dies, all right? Horrible death. So what you do is you take your or thumb you the negative. Bar, apartment. <laughs> your thumb is negative, and a, and then this is positive. Okay, so you got negative and positive and negative together is neutral, right? Uh -huh. So you always want to be working in neutral. Okay. Okay, with the electricity, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. You're gonna take and put one above the eye where you'd have a horn if you were a goat and your thumb on the other side. Now this is light touch. Okay. Okay. Your feet are on the floor because energy comes in from there and you breathe. Nice in through the nose, out through the mouth. Now what you're doing is you're drawing energy up past back brain, which is negative emotion or remembered, which is I'm gonna fail or I'm gonna die, I'm gonna get eaten, whatever right up into logic and creative, which says I can do anything and I will show you how. Oh, wow. So that's also where short term memory is. So you're, you know, you're learning stuff. It's up there in short term memory. If you can keep the stress down, right, by just accessing it here. I call this the oy vey. Okay. <laughs> oy vey, I'm forget, right? Okay, so you can do four fingers or like this, light touch, or the two fingers. And okay. hey, nobody has to know what you're doing. You know, you're on the desk, you know, and you just, okay, you know. I'm oh, doing smart, okay. okay. Okay, nobody has to know. And you're breathing, because see, this is the thing. Most people, when they get under stress, they don't breathe. They go, right? right. Like a little, yep. the little kid, <laughs> you know, you stop breathing, right? Oh. <laughs> okay, so. So that's what you do. You just learn, you, okay, I need to access short-term memory because it's up there. It hasn't filtered down to long-term yet. And so I'll access it. I'll breathe. And guess what? You will remember stuff and you will pass those tests. Wow. Well, oh, that's cool. I mean, it looked like you wanted to ask her something else too. So yeah, I, I guess it would be kind of related to that. I didn't realize um, it would be. I recently found this song called Weightless, which is apparently supposed to be arranged in a way that helps like reduce anxiety and so heart rate and be really good for sleeping. And I have noticed that since I started listening to that, I have noticeably been finding it easier to fall asleep. So is that kind of the same idea of with the broke music of helping the retention instead that tone and cadence helps you just yeah. de-stress? There's certain um, frequencies that are very good for normalizing blood pressure. And I've, and I've made videos of all these things. So if for some reason you didn't get enough here, you can go to <laughs> Facebook or YouTube and, and they're available for everybody. Okay. And um, where did they find those? Uh, Rose uh, Simons on YouTube. Okay. And Rose's Health and Wellness on Facebook. Excellent. Okay. But um, like people with high blood pressure, sometimes they have like uh, white coat syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fine mm -hmm. at home. They go into the doctor and then he wants to put you on all kinds of meds because your blood pressure's up. Um, all you have to do is, and I've done this, you know how they'll have you. Um, try to get your blood pressure up by running up and down the stairs uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then you you sit down and then they take your pulse I freaked him out one time because you know your heart's pounding and all that and then you just take some deep breaths and belly breaths and you go <sighs> like three times and that blood pressure drop just like that oh, and no, the guy that looks and says what did you just do <laughs> that's really because I am definitely a white coat syndrome kind of person it's just like I checked my blood pressure at home and it was like 120 over 80 like it's supposed to be and I walked through the door of your office and now it's like she's going to have a heart attack and I'm like no 
know, you, know, you just have needles in your office and needles and I are allergic to each other. And so my cortisol goes straight through the roof. And as soon as I get home, I'll be normal again. And they're just like, you're kidding. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's another thing that you can do with the Baroque music. And I actually did this. There was an older woman and sweet thing, but she had reverse white coat syndrome. She oh. wasn't happy unless she was going to the doctors. Okay, but and she had to get there through an ambulance. Well, after the fourth time in one week at $500 a pop, it was a good thing her husband had good insurance, but he was getting a little fed up. And because she would, she would stress herself to get her blood pressure up to 200 or above. Wow. So he calls me and says, is there anything that you can do? Right. <laughs> and so I said, sure, no problem. So I bring my Baroque music. Now, back then it was a little cassette player, uh -huh. but it still had the same earbuds. Right. This is all you need. You don't want to use um, Bluetooth. You got to have the earbuds. Okay. It's important. So however you do it nowadays, I just have the broke music on my phone, but uh -huh. I still have the earbuds and everybody has a belly button unless it's been surgically removed. So, okay. but even if you did have it surgically removed, you kind of know where it was. All right. Right. <laughs> so you, you take the earbuds on either side of your belly button by one inch. Okay. Cause your, your belly is your second brain. Oh, wow. Okay, your small intestine. So what you do is you put the music on and you put it on so that it's playing into your gut and you let it play and it will immediately, it would it dropped her blood pressure down to normal in like not even five minutes. Wow, so it's wow. almost like people playing music, like putting earphones or, or, or like a pregnant woman playing music yeah. to the baby. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm just soothing myself. Well, what it's doing is that Baroque music, the cadence of the beat is normalizing your internal everything. Oh, wow. So That is fascinating. It's amazing. So, uh, one Jeez, one last, and it's, it's an <laughs> expensive solution too. And it's probably, it's oh. got to be a whole lot healthier for you. Oh one yeah, you're not thing. taking drugs. You're not taking, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, and then, you know, doing like hours and hours of exercise and, stuff. and I'm not opposed to exercise, but some people are like, oh man, I got to spend five hours a day on the treadmill or something. Yeah. Uh, but slightly different question, but still along the lines of learning. One mm -hmm. of the things we were also talking about, and I'm thinking about, especially parents that are at home with their, their kids forced into homeschooling versus homeschooling by choice, which is what I did with my two. Mm -hmm. Are there any like um, scents or oils or candle flavors or whatever that can be used to also kind of help with memory retention, that type mm -hmm. of thing? Yep. Um, peppermint oil. Okay. Now with any of the oils, oils have only really, the, the ones that are around now, they've only really been out for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, before that, everything was the plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now they've distilled things down and things are really strong. So you need less is better. Okay. okay. You know, you walk into somebody's home and all you smell is vanilla, you know, everything. <laughs> That's a little too much. All right. But peppermint oil will increase your mental accuracy by 28% and give you energy. So in, at two o'clock in the afternoon, instead of grabbing another coffee or cappuccino or whatever, Coke or Pepsi or something, um, you could just smell that and it would give you a lift. Hmm. See? instead of beating your adrenals. Okay. okay. Which That's only have enough adrenaline for a lifetime. <laughs> right, be, yeah. And, and, you know, and as the time. are extending too. I mean, it's not exactly adrenals, but I remember going to see a dentist a few years ago and said, because I was having some teeth issues and he's like, it's nothing that you've done wrong. It's just that nature never expected us to live this long. And so now your teeth are, well, because our lives are longer. So what he was saying was that like, cause I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I floss, I brush, I do all this stuff. You know, why am I still having these issues? And he's like, well, some of it is just natural wear and tear that your teeth weren't designed to, you know, do as many things as you're making them do. I don't know. It was just his. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I, we that said cats were aliens. So do you grind your teeth in the back? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, then you're bruxating. It just means you need more magnesium. It's no big deal. You just, Amadeus is stressing you out, the cats. <laughs> <laughs> you oh don't want to kill him, so you're okay. You know, just 
you need more magnesium and some music. And, you like, know. There you go, some peppermint oil and, and life is good. So That's I, right. And then we save a life. And, and uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, this is good. But, the other thing too is this, we're all in lockdown. We're all like, you know, forget watching the news. Okay. Just forget the news. You can't do anything about it. Why stress over something you can't do anything about. All okay. right. So the idea is under, uh, I give permission to everybody to just watch funny movies. Okay. I'm talking gut wrench and just funny movies. Okay. Just, okay. just do it because that will massage your insides. All right. Oh, okay. So it's just like getting a massage on the outside is nice. This is a good. Okay. So whatever it is, is the funniest thing that you just goofy, you know, whatever okay. it is, watch it. I love it. It's kind of a laughter is the best medicine type thing. Definitely. Okay. That's so because cool. when you're under stress, stress just messes everything up. It lowers your immune system. Everybody's trying to get right. It's just great. Right. Well, and that's the other part. It's just like, and then it's interesting though, because a lot of like our family has an offbeat sense of humor to begin <laughs> with. And so we do laugh a lot. Sometimes it's sort of dark humor, but we do laugh a lot. And sometimes we'll get accused of like, you know, laughing inappropriate, like that was a bad situation. Why are you laughing? It's like, well, because we can't change it. So let's find something funny in it that we can laugh about, whether it was it's you know, like slapstick, you know, the guy falls down, so you laugh. Exactly, okay. yes. You know. <laughs> no, that is cool. Well, surprisingly, we've, we've like almost run out of time. It's just about at a half hour already, and this has been fascinating, and we never even got to talk about parasites, so I'd love to have you come back to talk about those. <laughs> parasites are us, better out than <laughs> <the> end. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll warn the audience in advance before the parasite conversation, uh, but before we wrap up, I know that you have been working on a webinar and I would love for you to share with the audience just a little bit about the webinar and I'll put the link to the webinar in the show notes, but if you want to just kind of tell them a little bit about it, what they can learn from you, go for it. Well, it's, <laughs> uh, it talks a lot about, uh, how we can get healthy. I mean, most people, by the time they hit 40 or 50, you know, they, they've pretty much given up everything in their life to attain to where they are. And then by then their health is shot. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Um, and then what do they do? I mean, the rest of, they want to live the rest of their life but now they're having to go to the doctors all the time and stuff like that, or take meds that they don't want to take, but they are told they have to. So my job is to help them be able to reverse all that and be able to enjoy their last 1500 years, however many, okay, <laughs> that they got coming. And, uh, and I've been there and done all that. Um, I wasn't always as I am. <laughs> in lockdown, you know, the, the law of um, if you, if somebody gains 15 pounds, well, I lost it. So if you gained it, it was probably mine. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, so I can, uh, my job is to help people to get well, feel good about themselves and uh, be able to have a better quality of life. And it doesn't matter what age you are, but usually the ones that are little more open to it are in that latter part of life <laughs> right no that makes sense because you know when you're younger you feel like you're going to live forever for the most yeah. part uh, but yeah, i do and, work with young ones too because you know some of them are smart i i started at 22 uh -huh. and uh and i've been working on it for the last 40 some years okay to get yeah. where i am now see right? and that's awesome <laughs> and you know and then and, and i think as different things start to hurt or whatever, then you start going, okay, there's gotta be a better way. Like I remember as a kid, mm -hmm. I would sprain my ankle consistently because I was, we didn't play sports with all the equipment and stuff that people use now. So, you know, we grew up in Chicago playing 16 inch softball where you count the ball with your bare hands. And if you didn't catch it right, I mean, like I have done something to every finger on every hand, <laughs> sprained, broke, whatever, dislocated. Cause if you hit the dirt the wrong way, there goes the finger. And my dad used to laugh and say, you're going to regret that when you get to be about 40. And now it's like, oh yeah, the weather got weird, you know? And so yeah. to your point, yes, I think as we get older and, and become more aware of like what we've done to ourselves when we were younger, not necessarily intentionally, we want to take 
better care of ourselves and find a better way. So, and and the thing is, I've worked it out where it's, you can now you can do it all at home. uh If you happen to be fortunate enough to live close enough and they haven't locked me down again, you can (laughs) always come and I'll work on you. But in the meantime, you can do it yourself. (laughs) I love it. So I encourage everyone to visit Rose's page follow her on YouTube. I've seen some of her videos and they're fantastic. She shares recipes. She shares health tips. Um, The thing that you did with the plantains not too long ago was just exciting. So, you know, there's a little bit of something for everyone. And again, I'll post the links in the show notes, but I hope you got as much uh, information out of today's video as I did, because I know I've learned a lot and I really like the stress thing with the short-term memory and such. So that was pretty, I'm not gonna try and recreate it on camera right now because I'll just make a fool of myself. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's just two <laughs> fingers and a thumb. <sighs> Everything. Okay, look, you know, it took me years to learn how to do this. So it's going to take yeah, a while. Well, mine are kind of retarded. There we go. I can, only, I can only do that with one of my hands. This one doesn't listen. This one does. This yeah, one, there not, you not so much. There you go. Well, yeah. and, and just when you were talking about electricity, I just, last story, and then we'll sign off. Many years ago, when you talk about grounding and electricity and you want to be neutral, I decided that I was going to change a... Uh, face cover on a socket in an apartment that we were renting. Oh no. (laughs) Well, the only tool that I had was a butter knife, which is my normal toolkit. Yeah. Not only did I blow out all the electricity in the whole apartment building, I went flying across the room. So (laughs) when, when Rose talks about being grounded and neutral, I can say from firsthand experience, be grounded, be neutral. Don't use a butter knife and don't play with electricity if you don't know what you're doing. (laughs) It's called turn it off at the breaker <laughs> before. <laughs> it didn't cross my mind. So, <laughs> or, have, or have a rubber handle. That helps too. But <laughs> Well, that helps too. But yeah. And the other thing is, is that I can tell, help you to reset your breakers. Because, you know, if anybody's had any operations, uh-huh. you know, we've got electrical lines in here. And just like you wouldn't take a sawzall to the wall indiscriminately. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Some people might, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Okay. The same thing with the human body. The Chinese didn't let people cut into them 5,000 years ago. Now anything goes, but, and that's because we got these electrical lines. And so I just worked on a guy today who had open heart surgery that took out six of his organs and systems. Wow. Six of them. So from the time he'd had that six months ago until today, nothing was working quite right. You had to reconnect him. Yeah, that's cool. So I showed him how to, to take care of the electrical line just so that he could be running at peak performance. I love it. This has been fascinating. And hopefully the uh, our audience wants you to come back as much as I do, because this has been just simply delightful. Um, for those of you, again, that would like to follow Rose, you can find her on Facebook. You can find her on YouTube. I'll put the link to her webinar. Thanks again for being our guest. And this is Mary and Amadeus signing off with Rose Simons, Rose's Health and Wellness. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.